Welcome to the Fish Bowl Radio, everybody. My name is Chief here, and joining me today is our newest member of the Fish Bowl Radio, Jalen Cavalier. Is going to join the Fish Bowl Radio here today, and will be on for the foreseeable future. Um, thank you for joining the Fish Bowl, Jalen. Yeah, thanks, Chief, for having me. I'm glad to be a part of the team, and I'm just excited to talk about some sports. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to do things a little bit different here on the fishbowl here. Um, so you probably know that we usually we combine the Raging Cajun and LSU, put them together in one episode, and people they like to do is just give them to their part or whatever they want to do. But anyway, so we're going to do things a little bit differently here. We're going to split up our episodes here. Basically, we're going to have one that's dedicated to the Raging Cajuns, you know, like uh, we can, you know, say go Cajuns more often like this, like go Cajuns, you know, that kind of thing here. So, yeah, we'll have more of this going on than anything else here. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this all goes down here. And we'll kind of talk more about the Sun Belt in general and we'll, you know, talk about more about their games. And regards to that, we'll also talk more about – like, like we're going to do predictions, of course, previews, reviews, that kind of thing that you come to expect here from the Fishbowl Radio. Now, that that segment is over with here. Let's go deep dive down into it here. So, Jalen, uh, some takeaways that we had from Old Dominion. I predicted Old Dominion to, to lose to UL. That wasn't the case on Saturday. Uh, what were some thoughts you had on the game? Uh, some thoughts I had on the game, Chief. Well, first of all, um, I'm kind of excited for UL's offense. I think they had some some key plays. I think the offensive line was maybe a little shaky at times, but they came they came to play today. They came to play uh, against against uh, I should say the other day against Old Dominion. But what really shocked me, which I kind of said it before, the defense. It's just I'm not gonna call out. the UL defense as a whole, I just think, you know, the secondary just didn't, just didn't play well. They just didn't play well. And I think coming up against UAB, they have to show where they could be a strong unit. Everybody, every corner was left on the Island and every receiver for old dominion took advantage of it. And every ball, deep ball touchdown, I see about three different touchdowns by maybe two different receivers, maybe even three different receivers for uh, old dominion. And it, it all became touchdowns and they couldn't stop UAB. They couldn't stop old dominion. I should say on offense, And ultimately, UL just couldn't put up the points to try to come back and win the game. Yeah, uh, there's it's an interesting take, right? So, like, we obviously all watched the deep ball being come very prevalent in that game here. The safeties were getting beat deep, and you know, this un you know, someone didn't take care of an assignment, blown coverages. That was like they've had like three or four, like over 30 yards, you know, scoring touchdowns there. So that's one key, like I mentioned in our Louisiana Raging Cajun preseason preview. One of my things that I was worried about with the Cajun was the secondary with them losing Trey Amos and Cam Podesclo was one of the two that left in the transfer portal. Um, I mean, there are some people trying to blame the quarterback, which if you that tells me you didn't watch the game at all, that if you blame the quarterback, because yeah. uh, Ben played a very good game. I mean, mm -hmm. offensive line looked like they bought well, you know, for the most part. Um, so they scored over 30 points of offense. That tells me right there that it wasn't the offense at all. So, but there was one thing I think there was something that we didn't touch yet, but Old Dominion was running these fast paced kind of offense, up tempo, get to the line and snap it real quick here. And occasions were they they were looking at the sideline, trying to get like signals in, like, okay, what are we doing, coach? You're looking this way, and they're like, okay. What's the play? What's the play call? What we got going on here? So uh, I know Lamar Morgan, the defensive coordinator for UL, they wasn't really like the whole defensive staff wasn't prepared for that of tempo kind of attack. Um, and, you know, that's what I think set up a lot of these long balls for easy touchdowns against the Cajuns, because if you would have had more preparation with that, you would have had more time with it. But, hey, I, I think the defense were just kind of shell-shocked from it. I think, uh, you know, at the last play of the game, it was kind of a short arm throw. Didn't look like it was going to – but, you know, it was just I, – I thought it was the right play call. 
it just wasn't executed properly that last one. But um, they could they were able to drive down the field. Both both teams seem like they don't have a defense as of right now. You could say the Cajuns do have one if you look at the Northwestern State, but that's comparing apples to oranges. It's not a comparable uh, team wise. We're gonna see what this Cajun team really is yeah. when we go to UAB this upcoming weekend. They're gonna be on the road taking them in Birmingham. So Jalen, um, like now we brought up UAB. What's some things that uh is Trent Dilfer's first season as head coach? How do you think uh the Cajuns match up with them on offense? Man, compared I to think UAB's it's, defense. Uh... I think it's gonna be a, a good a good matchup. And um I think when you get those first year coaches, they try to, you know, get those jitters out. But you know, it's gonna be the Cajuns third game of the season. I think I think he was gonna come out with something to prove on offense and honestly, because I mean I, mean, I would say defense, but I think defensively they have to of course obviously obviously stop the opposing team. But I think offensively is the key for the Cajuns because they need to put up points. That way you put up a lot of points, it's harder for for another offense to try to come back and it puts more pressure on their defense. So I think you all offensively just need to keep doing what they're doing, put up some points and don't take four downs to try to get into the end zone on the last play of the game when you because we all we all sort of throw. Like you said, it was just it was just a bad throw. But I can't blame the offense on that against Old Dominion. But I say against UAB, I think I think it's gonna be a I think it's going to be a Cajuns win. I really do. I think their offense is going to come out firing on all cylinders, but you just got to watch them defensively. I just think you got to watch them because you just you just you just don't know. And like you said, the tempo is what can cost the Cajuns the game. And I don't want to see that happen to them again. So, um, what uh, is going on here with UAB? Is so Cajuns come in as a one point dog early Vegas. Uh, coming out here so they so i ran the predictor it's something that's interesting it was wrong last week it had the case to be no dominion uh but this one has them losing to uab 26 23 uab has an elo of 87 right now um the Cajuns have a yellow right now. That lot, the live yellow, as we look at them, and it's a 105 ranking here. So if we're gonna go look kind of deeper, uh, deeper stats here. So margin of turnovers, they are plus nine in uh, in the victory here. I don't know why I said turnovers. I'm usually used to seeing that plus. So so far mm-hmm. between two games, we look at scoring by the quarter. Here's how the Cajuns score. So Cajuns typically have the lead in the first and the second quarter. They usually outscore their opponents 17 to 10 in the first, 21 to 13 in the second quarter. But I this is something that's interesting here. In the third quarter, the opposing team has outscored the Cajuns. The Cajuns have only outscored the other team in the fourth quarter by 10 points. So it's 69 to 51. Now, I know it's only two games and it's a small sample size, but that kind of tells me that the Cajuns ain't making enough halftime adjustments. As you break this stuff down and kind of look deeper into it, you can kind of see the flaws of where your team's falling short at here. So the reigning strength of schedule ELO is 87. Reigning strength of schedule holding win percentage is 86. So the Cajuns are going to have a tougher route coming up here. They still got Minnesota and that kind of thing. So we'll see what happens with all that there. So... I, the Cajuns, I think they couldn't really get much pressure on the quarterback because their their defenders were getting beat. You know, like covered sacks are a real thing. If your DB can hold up in coverage against a wide receiver, gives the defense a line more time, quarterback can't find this guy, and, you know, in turn, puts pressure on the quarterback and, and sacks him. So covered sacks are a real thing. And I didn't see a lot of pressure on the quarterback from the defensive line, the Cajuns, which I came into the season thinking it was going to be a really good thing. But the receivers seemed like they were getting open. It seemed like they were getting open within three or four seconds of the snap of the ball there. So, um, Jalen, how do you think this game is going to go? You think uh, the Cajuns get the win or not? I think, I think the Cajuns are going to get the win. I think it's going to be a close game. I think UAB – Having lost to uh, Georgia Southern, yeah, this past week, I think they're 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 trying to get that first Sun Belt win, so they're gonna figure, oh yeah, we gotta beat these Cajuns. We're 
going to be at home. I think they're going to be ready, and I, but I think the Cajuns are going to come out with a win. I'm going to say it's going to be – I'm going to say it's just going to be a close one. I'm going to say 35 to 32. Cajuns win by three. I think it's really going to be that close. I think it's going to be a, in the 30s as far as scoring. I think defensively both teams are going to make adjustments from their losses the previous week, and it's going to be, it's going to be a great game. But like I said, just if the Cajuns can get it defensively, they can win. So, if the Cajuns keep up offensively, they'll be fine. They they seem like they gelled a lot better. Like I said, biggest improvements from week one to week two. Defense definitely took a step back. So, I'm very worried about making this pick here. Um, I don't – it's like I want to pick UAB really bad. But it's like, who who's going to step up on defense? Like, who's going to be the guy that's going to make the big impact play at key moments in the game? When the game's on the line, you need to make that play. Who's the impact player on the Cajuns' defense right now? That's what needs to happen, and they might find him this game against UAB. I think the Cajuns will get a little bit better on defense. I got my concerns. I'm going to pick them to win this week, but I got my concerns and reservation about it. I'm going to say field goal makes a difference in this game. I think a one-possession game, you're not going to get more than that here. But I think this would be a good measure and stick for the Cajuns once they get really deep into conference play. Um, Because Old Dominion was their first conference game, which is – I don't like second-week conference games. It sucks for your team because they have to get ready for a conference beer right then early in the season like that. So typically week four, week five. So just jumping in early like that. I just think that if you get the Cajuns, maybe week four, week five, they might have been a little bit better off maybe playing against Old Dominion because – when you start in the re- regular season as a team, and when you end up at, it will be completely different uh, takes of it. It's still a young season, still a lot of football left to be played. So I'm going to take the get the me the bit give the Cajun the benefit of the doubt. I think they'll get it fixed. I got them beating UAB. I'm going to say hmm, 42 to 38 is what I'm going to say. I, I think that's going to be my uh, I think a lot of offense. I think the Cajun defense is going to struggle in this game a little bit. So we'll see. They might have it figured out. I hope they prove me wrong. But uh, so, yeah, that's what. Um, so let's take a look. Let's get a little deeper dive into UAB here. Of course, if people don't know, they're an American Athletic Conference. American Athletic Conference has been trying to push that power six thing for a while now. Their last 10 games, UAB is five and five. They lost to Georgia Southern last year, like Jalen alluded to. 49 to 35. They beat North Carolina A A and T 35 to 6. So, but UAB's got a tough game coming up right after the Cajuns. They got to take on number one, Georgia. So um that's gonna be interested, interesting here. So predicted results for them, if y'all must know. It's got them finishing eight and four this year and six and two in conference play. Got them beating Cajuns, losing to Georgia, losing to Tulane. Like that, that this that two game stretch after the Cajuns for them is gonna be brutal for UAB. So if we're looking at like, I want to see what their let's see advanced stats here. So let's see how they uh, kind of played throughout the entire game. Give you all four quarters and see what's actually going on here. So UAB. Their opponents usually seem like they jump on them in the first quarter. Now, granted, they played against Georgia Southern and North Carolina, A and T. Uh, they 17 7 in the first quarter. Quarter number two, when you get around to it, they the they usually come alive in the second quarter. 36 to 14 is usually how it goes. Third quarter, 14 to 7. Fourth quarter, they usually give up 17 to 13. So when we get down to the fourth quarter, it seems like they're kind of getting gassed. Um, they usually put up 35 points a game, which is good for 53rd in the country. Defensive points a game is 89th in the country. Margin of victory is seven and a half. That's number good enough for 42 in the country there. So uh, looking at this here, let's look at impact gains for them to kind of see what like where it's going to really be the critical one. For them here. Um, if they win, they gain 24.1 ELO points. They lose 25.9. If 
87 right now is where their quality of wins is at here. I want to see where they got the Cajuns at this uh, direct impact game. So if they win against the Cajuns, they'll gain 24 points there, which will probably move them up five to six spots. The, the stuff's kind of all over the place because it's in the beginning, but once we get four or five games into it, it'll be very simple to get into here. So advanced stats, let's go look at the Cajuns here real quick here. Already talked about the quarters and how they score and stuff. But the Cajuns have 78th in points per game on offense, 95th on defense points per game, and 58th margin of victory. So we'll see how it goes here. I want to see who's got the best, like, conference. Let's see. I'm kind of curious to see where they got the Sun Belt here. So far, let's we'll do a week-by-week -week Sun Belt prediction. The Sun Belt has a 17 and 9 non conference record, good enough for 65.38%. So far, right now, it's still got it's got the Cajuns finishing 7 and 5. 5 and 3 is their predicted conference record. So they got Troy winning the whole entire conference. So look, it's got James Madison being 11 and 1. And seven and one on the east side, and Troy winning the west. So the Cajuns are going to finish in a tie for second with South Alabama. South Alabama is my preseason favorite to win the Sun Belt. So Jalen, what you think of all that data right there? I mean, I can't, I can't say any of that is wrong because I mean, Troy won the conference last year. South Al is is a great team. You've seen what Texas State. With TJ Finley just beat Baylor last week. I mean, there's so many good Sun Belt teams this year. You can't keep, you can't count Coastal. I mean, I mean, the Cajuns have a lot of competition this year in the Sun Belt. It's gonna be tough for them not only to win the West but to win the whole Sun Belt. It's, it's gonna be a challenge. And and they they honestly weren't supposed to lose to Old Dominion, so it's kind of like ugh, it's like so it's it's it's, it's gonna be tough. But the numbers the numbers are the numbers. But I think the Cajuns can can make they can make big time plays on offense to score more points and then stop teams defensively they just got to work together as a unit and i know they all have these young guys we all know this young team but then this is in his second year he's trying to get this team right be better than they were last year so they just gotta they just gotta make some adjustments um so you, you made one mistake there, Jalen. The Texas State played UTSA, which they lost that one, 13 to 20. They played Baylor the week before. Yeah, that's true. But it's crazy how they really beat, beat Baylor. I still can't get over that. And, you know, Baylor lost, you know, again. Uh, that's the crazy thing about it. Um, Baylor lost to Utah. And Texas State, I don't think they realize they're going to be 0-2. They're playing Long Island, so hopefully it gets better for them there. But without further ado here, I'm going to close this first episode of our preview here for the Raging Cage against UAB here. Um, looking to see the secondary get a little bit better here. I know they've been having a little bit of rougher time here. And we'll see what happens here. So thank you for tuning into the Fishbowl Radio. Uh, Jalen, anything you want to say before we get off the air here? Uh, I just want to say, go Cajuns, beat UAB. The Sun Belt is better than the American Athletic Conference. And, uh, you know, just thanks for having me. All right. We'll see you next week, buddy. Thank you all for tuning to Fishbowl Radio. Go like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We even got the, the tickety of the talk, if you will. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a great and wonderful week. We'll see y'all next week. Have a good night, Fishbowl Nation.